This talk is sponsored by the Foundation for Economic Education. I'm really happy to be here and to talk both about my company, Merge and Order, because I am a little bit of a narcissist, <laughs> and, uh, and about the concept of a Merge and Order, because I think it's actually the most important concept that human beings seem to have such a hard time actually understanding. Uh, we, we can get glimpses of it, and yet it, it doesn't really live in our bones. It's not something that we get, that we feel. We feel the opposite. And so I want to walk through that. And to get there, I want to start with sort of my own story and how I discovered this concept and why I would name my company after it. So um, I, I had a somewhat unusual path to, uh, to these ideas. I uh, spent the past 12 years uh, as a, a creative director and a director in broadcast television. Great people. I mean, I, I have a lot of friends I love dearly. I learned a lot, and I got to work with amazing people that could create and produce amazing stories, stories that touch the heart. And I think that that's something that's generally lacking in this realm of ideas of ours, is bringing them back to the heart, because I think that the heart is actually the path to the head. I don't think things stick in the head unless they feel right in the heart. And uh, you know, one of the things that I did as a creative director for these networks is I had to be persuasive. So it's sort of a, you know, I'm very much the, the voice guy in this presentation. I don't, I'm not going to talk about much about exit other than uh, leaving these places, but um, I, uh, I had to try to convince people that they should tune in at a specific time on a specific day to a network to watch a show that I myself wasn't going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and my partner Josh is here uh, operating the camera and uh, we, would, we would joke that we don't even watch this network. <laughs> Like this is, and yet, so, so we had to really engage our empathetic senses to do the job. Um, but it did, it did teach us how to tell stories about complex ideas, how to boil them down to 30 seconds, then to 20 seconds, then to 15 seconds, and now, and ultimately to five seconds. We were doing lots of five second commercials before I left. Uh, so, you know. Uh, if anybody's ever read anything I've written, they, they would be surprised that I'm good at writing something that can happen in five seconds. Uh, it really, you need the video part, I think. That, it kicks in a different part of my brain. Um, but along the way, partly because of the financial crisis and because I think a lot of us have gotten more interested in economics, I just got bit by the economics bug. It, it just it started small, a little bit of Rothbard. And, you know, because you can always get just a little bit of him. Um, and, and it just grew. And it, and it just became something that be became a really intense passion of mine. And, um, and yet, as I read it, as I came to think I sort of understood some of these things, found them exciting, I also found sort of the language of economics and of economics professionals a little uh, challenging. Um, here is how economists talk about trust. <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting. <laughs> I, uh, you know, math is a kind of language, and, and so I think in a certain sense it's no different than sort of talking through, you know, the trust game. Um, but the problem with math and the problem with the, ma the use of math in economics is that it, Im it Im imbutes a precision that actually doesn't exist in the social world. Uh, the, each one of the variables, whatever they are, and there's some Greek symbols there, I don't know what they're called, um, suggests that there's a precise answer. There's a, there's a joke that economists, uh, you know macroeconomists uh, have a sense of humor because they use decimal points in their, uh, <laughs> you know, the multiplier will be 1.54. Uh, you know, that's funny, that's an interesting one. So, so the, the way I would approach trust is a little different. I, what I'm going to show you now isn't something I've produced, but it, it's, it's uh, more my language, more my style for coming at, coming at this kind of subject. No equations so far.
little better than uh, this, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, trust is actually really complicated, and yet it's also really simple. So you have to, you have to uh, get at the texture of it. Math doesn't have a lot of texture. It's sort of, uh, it sort of bathes in the elegance of precision. And it's, it's not a really good language, I think, to talk about social phenomenon, to talk about humanity. Um, so, you know, as I was uh, trying to understand the changes in the world around us, I, I fixated on a debate between two dead economists, because why wouldn't that be the place to go? Um, John Maynard Keynes and Friedrich Hayek. And if you've seen the videos, and I'm going to share a, a section of one with you soon, uh, I take a slightly different approach to these two gentlemen than I think they probably were expecting to have ever happened. Um, but, but before I do that, I, I, I was uh, recently tagged in a Facebook post. You want to talk about emergent order. Um, and it said, John Papoli, eat your heart out. And it linked to a paper. And in that paper, the paper said, Keynes versus Hayek on asset prices. And it included pages of this. <laughs> At first, I didn't understand what, the, what it meant. And I was like, oh, I see. So that this, is, this is the other way to do it. <laughs> I, 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 raise your hand if you can read any portion of this. So OK, you guys are really impressive. <laughs> very smart. Very smart audience. Um, I, I decided to take a different approach. And I'd like to share a little bit with that you, with you now. Which way should we choose? What about my phone? What took down the fight continues? Gains in high excitement round. It's time to win it. What from the top or from the crowd? Let's listen to the great set. Gains in high excitement. Jobs are a means, not the ends in themselves. People work to live better, to put food on the shelves. Real growth means production of what people demand. That's entrepreneurship, not your central plan. My solution is simple and easy to handle. It's spending that matters. Why is that such a scandal? Money sloshes through the pipes and the sluices, revitalizing the economy's juices. It's just like an engine that's stalled and gone dark. To bring it to life, we need a quick spark. Spending's the lifeblood that gets the flow going. Where it goes doesn't matter, just get spending flow. You see slack in some sectors as a general glut. But some sectors are healthy, only some in a rut. So spending's not free, that's the heart of the matter. Too much is wasted as cronies get fatter. The economy's not a car, there's no engine to stall. No expert can fix it, there's no it at all. The economy's us, we don't need a mechanic. Put away the wrenches, the economy's organic. Which way should we choose? What bottom up for more to down the fight continues? Things in high excitement. It's really fun to have a, a live audience uh, see that. You know, it's on YouTube and it's just not the same. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see here. Don't, we don't need to watch it again. So um, one of the things that was amazing about making, and this, this was a segment from the second video. There was actually a first one, so this was a sequel uh, called Fear the Boom and Bust. One of the things that was so amazing is that the whole point of these videos for me was to get across the ideas of Friedrich Hayek in comparison to the mainstream of Keynes. And we actually live in Hayek's world. That's the funny thing. Because the next day, after posting the first one, this picture appeared on Twitter. I don't know where this is. It might not even be in America, but it's a student seeing it in their class. And that, like, you can't plan that. That's, that, is, that is emergent order at work. That is um, a path that is not by my design, but that emerges just by virtue of the fact that people do things that you can't expect, you can't even believe, you can't imagine. Uh, Although my favorite is this. So this is, a, this is a fourth grader, I think. And her dad sent this to me in an email. I get emails like this all the time. I mean, you know, I didn't study economics. I actually haven't had any economics classes. So I might be doing great damage to society. <laughs> so there's a caveat. I don't think I am. I wouldn't be here if I thought I was, but you know, there are little asterisks. 
Uh, and, and actually, that's a Hayekian asterisk, because we never really know. Uh, we have to really be careful about the limits of our knowledge, about to the extent to which we think we understand the world. Even those of us who um, believe in a, a bottom-up order, a world in which we, you know, we decide what we do for ourselves, we, we still tend to fall into the trap of thinking we've got it all figured out because we're so smart, or we think we're so smart. And I think that there's a danger in that. Um, and it's a danger that really I see Hayek as the, as the antidote for. It's, he, he is the anti-hubris in, in, in an industry that prides itself on modeling the world and lining it up to three, four decimal places, and then never going back <laughs> to, to check the work against what actually happened, because it doesn't ever work out quite the way they predict it. Uh, so you know, this, is, this has been my, uh, my baby. If I die tomorrow, I will have put these two men in, in rap videos. And um, I, I'm proud of that, and I think that's a pretty good accomplishment. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but in a way, that was just a start. And so since this, so much of the, what you've heard tonight is about entre entrepreneurship and about um, not just complaining about the world we've got, but actually doing something to, to change it, doing something positive, something active. I started a company with my best friend Josh and my wife Lisa, and, uh, and we brought on Andrew and, a lot, and some other folks here in the audience um, to try to do more of this, to try to actually make entertainment that is commercially viable, which these ones weren't exactly, but we're getting there, um, that can teach these ideas. But put entertainment first. And, and why, why, did I, why did I do this? Why did I create a company instead of a nonprofit? Nothing against nonprofits. But we have a lot of nonprofits in this world of ideas. And I think one of the things that they actually lack is the feedback mechanism of the market. You know, we believe in emergent order. We want, we want this feedback loop. We want to see what happens and then draw on the information that is dispersed throughout everyone's, throughout society, throughout each of our minds. The market does that in one, in one sense. When somebody pays for something, they're imparting information that they like it, that it's worth it, that there's value. And so I just thought that was crucial to the, our success. And that is why not only did we call it Emergent Order, um, but we made it a company and, and made it something that I hope to grow and to be successful with. And so I wanted to leave you today with, um, with visualization. And uh, I can be pretty snarky, but I'm going to put all the snark aside because I, I think that there is true beauty in this concept. It is, it is the most beautiful and challenging idea in the social world. And since I've set my job to visualize these ideas for people who are not familiar with them and who won't read Man, Economy, and State, um, I think this just does a... A, 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 an unbelievable job. So these are starlings. And when you look at them, what you see is the beauty of emergent order. They're dancing, but there's no one to lead their dance. There's no choreographer. They're producing art, and yet there's no artist. There's no auteur to put the pen to page. There is no leader here. And when you look closely, as you do here, it looks like chaos. It looks like anarchy. It's scary. Just like our lives can be scary. We, we see the chaos at the ground level. And so it's hard for us to pull back and see this beauty of the order that emerges in society. It's hard for us to, to visualize this moment for humanity. And yet, humanity is always portraying this if we look. One of the things that's so special about people is that we can actually analyze our world. We can try to understand it. We can try to empathize and create, but the birds have an advantage on us 
Because while they can't understand the beauty, at least I don't believe they can, that frees them from fighting it. They fly with their instincts and they don't collide. They don't coerce each other. And so the harmony emerges. But because we have this ability to understand, we also have this ability to attempt control in a way that the natural world cannot. And the great irony in attempting that control is that, as we see time and again, it produces chaos. It creates collision and disorder where we're hoping for order. Economists call it unintended consequences. Um, but it's like reaching your hand into that cloud and trying to change it. And I don't think we should try. Thank you.